The Soyuz rocket stands 162 feet tall, weighs about 640,000 pounds, and consists of the Soyuz spacecraft inside a protective shroud at the top and the three-stage Soyuz 2.1A booster below. The first stage has four liquid engines strapped to the side of the core vehicle. Each will burn for 1 minute and 58 seconds before they drop away. The core engine of the first stage also serves as the second stage and continues to burn until 4 minutes and 57 seconds into the flight. The third stage has a single engine that will ignite before the separation of the second stage, helping to push it away safely. It will burn until the 8 minutes and 46 seconds mark of the flight, and at that point the Soyuz spacecraft will separate from the third stage, having arrived at its preliminary orbit. The whole Soyuz spacecraft is 24 and a half feet long with an overall volume of 301 cubic feet and comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats for the crew members during launch, entry, and landing, and contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight. It also houses life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachute and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown as the spacecraft lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on the module, which are used to control the spacecraft's orientation, or attitude, during the descent until parachute deployment. The descent module also contains a guidance navigation and control system used to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. This descent module is 7.3 feet long with a diameter of 7.1 feet and a habitable volume of 124 cubic feet. It is the only portion of the Soyuz that survives the return to Earth. The orbital module at the top is 9.8 feet long. It connects to the descent module via pressurized hatch. This is where the crew has a small amount of room to move around following launch during the flight to the space station. It has a docking mechanism, hatch, and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock with the space station, and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the station for docking. There is also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of failure of the rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control thrusters, avionics, and communication and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays are folded against the body of the propulsion module, which, along with the orbital module, separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn. The solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the unlikely event that the crew needs to leave the station unexpectedly. Here you now see, uh, after the crew arrived at the integration building, each crew member underwent final medical exams, suiting up in those Sokol launch and entry suits one by one. As you see, the crew members moved into a mock-up of a Soyuz spacecraft seat allowing technicians to conduct pressure checks, ensuring that their suits were airtight and free of any leaks. As you'll see in a minute, uh, the crew uh, was separated from uh, a fairly large throng of well-wishers and the media through a protective pane of glass to maintain their quarantine as uh, the RSC Energia technicians conducted the leak checks on their Sokol launch and entry suits. Once again, uh, final uh, opportunity for the three crew members to wave goodbye to the well-wishers at the launch pad. Before uh, climbing those uh, few stairs, riding the elevator up to the uh, entrance level and the hatchway to the Soyuz descent module to be helped into their respective seats. Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz commander in the center seat of the uh, Soyuz, flanked to his left by Zabritsky who is board engineer number one, and to Rizhikov's right is Johnny Kim of NASA,
board engineer number two. T minus four minutes and counting. What is the status of the atmosphere? No clouds. The uh, fuel lines and the other elements of the rocket engines now being purged with nitrogen that fireproofs them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer from the base of the 2.1A booster. Once again, uh, the launch precisely timed for the moment when the Earth's rotation places the Cosmodrome in the plane or corridor of the orbit of the space station inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. A narrow phase angle for this launch of just 14.6 degrees to facilitate the two-orbit fast-track rendezvous. Coming up on the two-minute, uh, 30-second mark. We see the commander and flight engineer. The booster tank now being pressurized for flight, optimizing the flow of fuel helping to add structural support for the rocket on the pad. T minus one minute, 40 seconds. The ground propellant feed has been terminated. Coming up on the one minute mark. Soyuz about to go on internal power. T minus one minute and counting. About 20 seconds away from the first umbilical retracting from the side of the booster. There's the retraction of the first umbilical. Standing by for the second umbilical to retract and initiate engine sequence start. Auto sequence initiated, standing by for engine start. We have main engine start. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engine ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Soyuz MS-27, Kim, Rizhikov, and Zubritsky begin a sprint for a marathon mission on the International Space Station. Soyuz arcing out to the northeast. Good roll, pitch, and yaw program reported. Thrusters operating nominally. All first stage engines operating normally, according to the engineers of the blockhouse in Baikonur. 40 seconds into the flight. The vehicle parameters are all reported to be stable. Stable at 40 seconds. Everything One minute into the flight, the International Space Station flying directly over the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The Soyuz booster passing through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. The crew is still All vehicle systems reported to be normal. Ninety seconds into the flight, first stage performance nominal. Everything nominal on board. Copy. About fifteen seconds away from first stage separation. Zero eight forty eight forty eight. Everything nominal on board. Standing by for first stage separation. Roll speech nominal. First stage separation reported. The symmetrical departure of the strap-on boosters. Second stage up and running. 
Vehicle uh, parameters all are yes, normal according to the engineers at the blockhouse in Baikonur. Two and a half minutes into the flight. Thirty-six miles in altitude, seventy-five miles downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Thrusters operating. Second stage engines uh, all operating normally. Coffee. The launch route has now been jettisoned as planned. The second stage shutdown will come at the four minute, 37 second mark into the flight. Launch occurring on time at 12.47 and 15 seconds a.m. Central Time, 10.47 and 15 seconds a.m. Baikonur Time. This view now from a camera on the upper stage of the Soyuz booster. Three minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, all vehicle parameters continue to operate as planned. Thrusters operating nominally and everything nominal on board. The crew is feeling good. Good control of the vehicle. Five minutes of powered flight remaining. Nominal flight. Everything nominal on board. Four minutes into the flight. All vehicle uh, systems reported to be in great shape. Second stage. About 25 seconds to go until second stage shutdown. We're standing by for second stage shutdown and separation. Copy. Third stage oxidizer tank has been pressurized. Second stage separation confirmed. Everything nominal on board. The crew is feeling good. That was the third stage lower skirt that was jettisoned as planned. The Soyuz now flying on the uh, power of its third stage engine with about three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. All systems continue to operate in excellent fashion. Third stage engine operation nominal. Copy and everything nominal on board. Strapped into their seats in the uh, center section of the Soyuz MS-27, Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked to his left by Alexei Zabritsky and Johnny Kim of NASA, flanked to Rizhikov's right. Roll pitch your nominal. Roll pitch and yaw all reported to be in good shape. Nominal on board. A pre-programmed uh, set of maneuvers for the Soyuz 2.1A booster coming up on the six and a half minute mark into the flight. Two minutes and 20 seconds of powered flight remaining. This uh, third stage engine provides 67,000 pounds of thrust for its uh, four minutes of operation to place uh, the Soyuz spacecraft into its preliminary orbit. Coming up on the seven minute mark in the flight. Mark seven minutes. All vehicle parameters continue to operate as planned. Third stage thruster operating nominally. Copy. The crew is feeling good. Everything nominal on board. Nothing but uh, good reports uh, coming from the Soyuz back to the 
flight controllers, not only in Baikonur, but there at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. Seven minutes, 45 seconds into the flight, one minute of powered flight remaining. Third stage, engine operating nominally. Separation expected in 30 seconds. And uh, we have third stage shutdown. Third stage shutdown, spacecraft separation confirmed. Favore, how do you read us? This is Moscow. We read. And we have confirmation of solar ray deploy and navigational antenna deploy as planned. So, uh, after a flawless countdown, an uneventful ride uphill for 8 minutes and 46 seconds for Johnny Kim of NASA and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Ryzhikov and Alexei Zubritsky. Third stage shutdown and spacecraft separation came right on time at the 8 minute 46 second mark into the flight, followed seconds later by solar ray deploy and the unfurling of the navigational antennas that will guide the Soyuz to what is expected to be an automated docking to the Prashal module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station 